My name is Josh Fulton, and the topic for this mini lecture is wartime expositions during the First World War. So, to start off with, we need to look a little bit at the history of expositions. And in the last 20 or 30 years, historians have really gotten into examining how states, nations, and other actors crafted various forms of fairs expositions, etc., both in the United States and around the world. Oftentimes, these would be to, um, you know, celebrate anniversaries or just to have versions of state fairs, right, this kind of thing, and looking at how these became performative spaces in which a state or another institution could craft you know, a message that they wanted to be able to convey, uh, and then what do certain events or other things available within those spaces, you know, what, what does that say about that state or about, you know, that anniversary or, or those identities? Uh, and this is very much the case. So that, that research uh, is, is really informative for us when it comes to thinking about wartime expositions during the First World War in the U.S. So, by the time you get to uh, early 1918, uh, there really is an effort on the part of the Committee of Public Information, or CPI, to be able to better convey, or even more so convey, you know, more directly engage with the public. And again, they are already messaging with the American public on a lot of levels. So, of course, uh, they're making use through state councils and, and other actors. Uh, they're making use of the press to convey information and advertisements for the war. They're making use of posters. They're making use of silent films, which are being displayed in Liberty Theaters. They're also making use, uh, of course, uh, the state is making use of the Four Minute Men to convey speeches uh, around the country. So the idea then of making use of performative spaces like fairs and expositions, this becomes just another layer uh, that the government is going to be able to try to utilize in order to convey the importance of the war, the message of loyalty, the idea that all can get involved no matter what kind of role one would want to play uh, in these expositions. So there is support for this by the spring. There will be dozens of these held around the country. Uh, the CPI is going to put up a lot for this, uh, but they're really going to rely, um, you know, with their division of films, they're really going to rely on local partners uh, to be able to support a lot of this. Uh, there will be major expositions, uh, and we'll mention one or two here, uh, in places like Los Angeles as well as Chicago, uh, but there would be other uh, smaller expositions uh, around the United States as well, again, throughout <coughs> much of 19, uh, 1918. Uh, now, there has been some uh, research, including some of my own, done uh, on these expositions, looking at them from a variety of, of perspectives. Uh, some scholars have come at this from the, the perspective of uh, the, the battlefield trophies uh, that one would see uh, if someone was to visit one of these, uh, and others have come at this from the perspective of the grounds, what could be there, what does this say um, you know, about other aspects uh, of, of the war and wartime. Uh, and uh, much of my focus is kind of the idea of what does this say about patriotism and sort of performance and that kind of thing. Uh, and you know, uh, there are other scholars on this too. Uh, now, in the case of Los Angeles, in the case of, Cal um, of Chicago, in the case of some of these other places. So again, you're relying not only on support from uh, the CPI, you're going to rely on uh, state councils uh, of defense, uh, and then you're going to rely on, on fundraising. You're going to create uh, exposition grounds, which you're going to have uh, local branches of, of national government uh, wartime administrative efforts. Uh, that are going to display their wares and show how the public uh, can get involved with things. Uh, so I'm thinking specifically in the case of Los Angeles, uh, they're going to have demonstrations of 
how the food administration you know can show off how eat you know for example consuming fish you'll have massive fish tanks trying to show individuals that consuming fish is the better thing as opposed to eating you know other kinds of foods uh, in the case of Chicago uh, you're gonna have demonstration kitchens and other things uh, and in the case of Chicago the state council is going to take a big role uh, they're going to be responsible for getting a lot of the local workers uh, as is the women's committee of national defense uh, for the state of Illinois uh, and the grounds are going to be uh, what is now Grant Park in downtown Chicago so again these kinds of expositions the whole idea is really show off to the public uh, not only captured battlefield materials uh, as a form of, of trophy, uh, to, to, to paraphrase one scholar on this, uh, but as a way to really demonstrate the idea that you can see what happens in the battle, you will battles you occasionally see um, uh, currently serving soldiers uh, engage in, in drill or even mock battles, uh, so you'll see that. Uh, you'll see lots of, of, of speeches and propaganda uh, really designed to kind of put the public into this wartime world that is controlled uh, by by the CT, C, CPI uh, and and these other institutions, and the goal really is to you know kind of overwhelm the public with this, get them supportive. Uh, so you know much of the effort, not only at the national level but at the state and local level, was to really try to get the public to see how th many of their daytime roles and activities that they would do normally. Uh, can be considered in support of war and so much of this was designed to kind of keep that messaging going reinforce the public with this uh, in the case of Chicago uh, these wartime expositions are gonna have uh, a fairly high average daily attendance uh, so it'll go for about two weeks you'll have a series of rail cars that are come up um, the Women's Land Army in Illinois is going to be responsible for uh, sort of setting the grounds uh, you're gonna have soldiers from Camp Grant out in Rockford who'll come and will do demonstrations uh, and over a hundred thousand people uh, every day for two weeks are going to be there you're gonna have themed days right this kind of thing uh, so you'll have versions of this uh, that'll be then taken uh, and, and elsewhere but places like Chicago especially are going to be pretty highly attended uh, folks from around the Midwest are going to attend uh, so again wartime expositions really are a, a fascinating way to kind of understand wartime America uh, in 1918 especially uh, and how the state sought to be able to dialogue with the public in a, over the war and the importance of, of loyalty and of service in a space uh, that, that they can control. Thank you.